What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning. Happy December 31st, the last day of the year. It is New Year's Eve. Hope everyone has some amazing plans in store for them tonight. I got a couple of different parties that I've been invited to. Where I end up is probably going to be my couch. I really don't feel like going out. I feel like just sitting home, maybe getting a pizza, some chicken wings, watching the two college football games, and call and get a night. Folks, to be completely honest with you, I just don't want to deal with the headaches and the hassles out there. I don't know. Maybe if someone twists my leg enough, I might get off my butt, hop in an Uber, and go somewhere. But it's not looking too bright. I'm going to be honest. Even though my friends don't listen to this video, so it doesn't really matter. But anyways, listen, last night, you know what it was? Thursday, kickball season finally resumed. It was semifinals. We took the field. First inning, we let up four runs, and that was it. We lose the game 4-1. to one. I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened. I wasn't playing. You know my quad is torn. I don't know. Listen, all's good. Good kickball year. Came in second. We lost in the semifinals. I got softball in two weeks, trying to win the title there. I'm getting my body physically prepared. I am starting to do yoga next year. Going to get some stretching, flexibility, strengthen up my leg muscles again. Hopefully, his injury heals and I can get back onto the field. That's what I'm excited about. But I hope everyone has an amazing night tonight. I'm um, probably not going to hear too much from me tonight on crypto in general because I'm going to take it low. I'm going to start off the year with a bang. I got a lot of great announcements that are coming to the channel and coming to the Patreon starting in the next couple of days with some great projects that you're going to want to hear about. Anyways, enough about my ramble. I don't want to hear those YouTube comments down below. Actually, I do. I love those comments. But listen, let's look at the market. Let's see what's going on. Let's talk about some more FUD coming out of BitBoy. Let's talk about crypto regulations and what I think is going to shape up in 2022. As we head over to live coin watch, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a Bitcoin dominance says once again, let's go. You know the saying, it's stuck in the range, 39 to 41. As we're sitting at 39.28%, Bitcoin is flat at $48,036. Where does it go from here? No one really knows. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. I couldn't tell you. But as we look at the longer picture, we look at the longer vision, 80 to 100K is still my goal for Bitcoin. I don't think it's done just yet. Remember, 35% on that Bitcoin dominance is when I say we put a fork in it and we're going to watch these other alts run. If we go up to 45, this thing is just going to accelerate on the up and up. It's that simple. Total market cap, 2.3 trillion, not too shabby, but we are ending the year above 2 trillion, which is a major milestone. Last bull cycle, bull run, 2017, 2018, we hit about 800 billion, and now we're at 2.3. If my math is right, we almost 4X'd it, 32, no, my math's way off there. 3X'd it, give or take. We would be at 2.4 if we did a 3 on the 8, so we're all good at 2.3. So if we want to look out to the next bull cycle, which is about three years from now, which two years starting tomorrow, right? And we do another 2x or another 3x from this, we're looking at almost a 6.5 to $7 trillion market cap. Look out even further, 28.29. Do another 3x from that $7 trillion. What are you looking at? Almost a $21 trillion market cap. You see how quickly this can really start to add up, folks. This is definitely going to be a massive market. But let's get into the rest of the coin prices. I'll be loved XRP. It's down just a tad bit at $0.84. Cents. It so barely wants to be $0.85, yes, folks. I'm going to say this. And I'm going to say it for the final time in 2021, XRP will not miss the bull run. Listen to me. XRP will not miss the bull run, the bull cycle, whatever you want to call it. It will have a run up. It will have its moment in time. I like to compare it to the Solana moment. Solana went from like a dollar to $200. XRP is going to run from, you know, 80 something cents all the way up to 10, 20 something plus dollars it's going to happen the question is when no one really knows no one has a crystal ball it's not gonna happen tomorrow it's not gonna happen in two days could it happen in two months six months yes absolutely the fact here is is that we're in crypto we know what we hold and we know where this thing is going now let's get over to my favorite person in the world bitboy first this guy 
puts out fake news in September, saying that this lawsuit's coming to an end. He puts out more fake news in October, lawsuit's coming to an end. He then doubles down in November with his alleged insider that ran into some like Ripple employee in Burger King or something, and his folks got in this guy's ear and they were talking and the Ripple employee told his guys as they were eating a Whopper that the lawsuit's over, it'll be over by the end of the year and they will have made the announcement. He doubled down. He was wrong again. He then went on to CNBC in like December-ish and he told CNBC that his his insiders and that, that his people that worked for him, that they told him that this case is over. Mark his words. Well, he has been a liar again and now he is coming out with even more lies. It is very toxic, folks, when you have this many followers and people look to you for information and you continue to put out misinformation and misguide them. It is toxic. Listen to what he says. Uh, we do have Brad Garlinghouse that said he did believe in January that this would possibly be over. All right, Brad Garlinghouse never said that he thought in January that this would possibly be over. Never, ever, ever did he say that. He said early 2022 is what Brad said. That doesn't mean January. So BitBoy, you, you need to get your stuff together because you're becoming a, a passive compulsive liar and it really is getting disgusting. Nebraska Crypto puts this out. MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor purchased or owns 124,391 Bitcoin. That means for every $100 drop in the price of BTC, the total USD value decreases by over 12 million folks. That's absolutely absurd. But you want to talk about the bigger thing here? It seems to me as if Bitcoin is becoming centralized. What do you think? Come on, comment below. Let this guy keep buying and MicroStrategy keep buying and then, and these couple of companies that are all tied together keep keep buying. Eh, looks like you got a centralized Bitcoin to me, folks. And then you today puts this out. Top tier exchange moves 309 million XRP. As we move over to the article, what are we seeing? Well, I'll tell you right here where my highlights go. The funds were shifting from the leading South Korea headquartered exchange BitThumb internally between GoPax and FTX. The largest transfer of over 177 million XRP was made between anonymous wallets, according to BitThumb XRP analytics provider. Why is this big? Well, because XRP is being shifted. Why is it being shifted? We don't know. But what we do know, and whenever I see South Korea involved, is that in 2017, 2018, when XRP was absolutely skyrocketing and hitting its all-time high at $3.96, South Korea was leading the Way. South Korea was leading the way until good old coin market cap decided to pull the plug and remove the South Korean pricing, which caused internal fun among all XRP holders, making them think that the price of XRP was on its way down when it really wasn't. Good old manipulation at its finest. And then from Wall Street Pro, breaking news, Gary Gensler has hired a senior advisor specializing in cryptocurrency who will be in charge of policy making and interagency work relating to the oversight of crypto assets. Remember this name, Corey Freyer. This is very important. Why? Well, let's go on and read why. Corey Freyer spent a decade working as an advisor to members of Congress before serving as a senior staffer on the Senate Banking Committee for Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio. Senator Brown requested letters to circle last month. Frey uh, spearheaded crypto policy for Senator Brown, who has been outspoken about his concerns about the risk of crypto and posed to investors calling blockchain a shady, diffused network of online funny money at a hearing in early July. Gensler appointed a crypto-focused senior advisor in line with his stated focus on establishing a regulatory framework for crypto as well as a signal that the SEC could step up its efforts to regulate the industry in 2022. So what are we seeing? Well, we're clearly we're seeing an incompetent, an incompetent Gary Gensler. He cannot do this all by himself. He definitely doesn't have the backing of the, S of the SEC board members like Hester Pierce. He has people leaving the team left and right because they know that this thing is going nowhere. They always question him and he he does nothing besides hiding his living room. So what is he doing? Well, he's getting someone else to grow the backbone for him. He's going to push this off into someone else from the SEC who's going to start going after cryptocurrencies and pushing out these regulations. What do I expect to see? I expect to see the SEC ramp up. I expect the SEC to start going after more cryptocurrency companies like Cardano ones that have had ICOs and come over to the US. I also expect the Ethereum Foundation to be gone after. I expect there to be mass lawsuits dropped against a bunch of different cryptocurrency companies and 
amongst this base. Why? Because that is how they are going to sh uh, shake out and scare new people, new groups from trying to get into startup coins. That is the steps of regulations. Then they will drop the hammer on all regulations. They will make the exchanges clean up themselves. I firmly, firmly believe that 2022, we get crypto regulations to some extent and then talking about illegal securities joking folks of course look at this you can buy xrp in poland at his local shopping mall nothing like buying xrp at a cryptocurrency kiosk in the shopping mall i never knew it was that easy to purchase securities and then to finish off ron hammond puts down i'm not going to read this whole thing to you he says, as 2021 comes to a close, I thought it would be good to provide an update as to where it thinks stands for the crypto policy in Congress. The tail end of the year includes multiple hearings, bills, and teases for what is to come. Here is a thread of what we're seeing on the ground in D.C. Remember, Ripple has an office in D.C. to help them get front and center of all of these issues. He says, not to sound like a broken record, but things are very hectic in DC. In the five years I worked in crypto policy, this is the busiest it's ever been. Crypto is the sexy issue for financial service policies and everyone's a piece of it. As Congress heads into an election year, there are a lot of potential elements that start to come into the picture. Republicans seem confident they will flip the House. Democrats are fairly sure to hold the Senate, but like most elections, it will get diverse quickly. Typically in the election years, Congress works in normal business hours till about June or July. Then they focus on campaigns and, and messages for the voters. So realistically, Congress has about six solid months to work on legitimate policies and crypto is top of their mind for many. The last few months of 2021, we saw hearings in both House Financial Services, Crypto CEO hearings, and Senate Bank and Stablecoin hearings. Both hearings vary drastically in tone. For the House hearing, both sides of the aisle were much more open to crypto, not all but most. While there are a variety of reasons for this, there is a common theme we are seeing in generational difference. Similar to policy issues like marijuana banking, younger members, regardless of party affiliation, are more open to crypto and asking us to come in and educate. So I'm going to stop that there. You can continue to thread on his page. Listen, I think what we're seeing is they're start, Congress is starting to wake up to crypto. They know it's not going away. They really thought that they, they could sweep this thing under the rug and it was going to go away and it wasn't going to be an issue for them anymore. They are finally waking up to it. They have seen that this thing has got all the way up to a $3 trillion market cap, that there is money in the space and that there will be more money into the space as we move forward. So what are we going to get? We're going to get the SEC trying to come out. We're going to get Congress coming out. We're going to get a bunch of different cryptocurrency guidelines rules, whatever you want to call them, that are going to affect this market. But what do we need in order to get the big money to enter the space? We need guidelines. We need regulation. Big money will not get involved if there are no rules to the trade because they will not risk tens of millions of dollars in a wild, wild west where they can lose it in the blink of an eye from some scammy company out there, from someone doing a crazy rug pull because this is the wild, wild west and anything goes. That's where I'm going to leave this, folks. Listen, Crypto Rex 2022, mark my words, they are coming. To what extent, we will find out, but we will get more regulatory guidance and policies created, either from the House or from the SEC. Be safe tonight. Enjoy your New Year's Eve. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch everyone in 2022. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.